Eustace says Pam Schuster approaches the finish line, and at the turnaround point, John, she had only two seconds on Karen Couric. And two seconds isn't a lot when you're trying to hold off a former world champion, Schuster, obviously giving it everything she has. Crossing the finish line in 56-28, currently in first place, out on the road, Dee Dee Demet Barry chasing her down, fourth after 20 kilometers, and she's still got her mouth open, sucking down that oxygen, John. It's a hard, it's a brutal effort. Dee Dee, one of the most prolific race winners in the United States, looks to be out of contention here for the victory, but still trying for a podium spot. She's in contention for third. The 27-year-old Saturn rider, as Karen Couric is catching up to the woman that started one minute ahead of her, Couric looking good, trying to get those two seconds back on Schuster that she knew that she was behind at the 20K mark. Karen Couric has one of the most beautiful fluid positions in all of bicycle racing. Look how her upper body doesn't move at all and her legs just seem to flow around the bicycle. That is the form that brought her a world championship. Karen Couric trying to get those two seconds back on Schuster as she passes by on the right. It's not far now to the finish line. Karen Couric under full pressure but doesn't show it. Body isn't moving. Beautiful fluid style. The Met Barry across the finish line currently in second place with a time of 56.49 as Holden gets back into her saddle catching the woman that started two minutes ahead of her. Holden is having a terrific race, John. Taking no prisoners, Mary Holden wants this spot on the Olympic team, and she is putting in an absolutely brutal effort, flying through the wind, showing the power that has carried her to so many international victories over the past few years. And someone trying for a victory right now, Karen Couric, her time will put her in first place, a terrific last 20 Ks. She's knocked Pam Schuster out of the lead. She's in the lead right now, but right here, the woman who looks to be taking it all, Mary Holden, forces her way to the finish line in search of her fifth national time trial championship and a berth on the Olympic team. And Mari Holden wins by over a minute in a time, John, that would have won the men's event just a few years ago. So Holden in first, Couric second, Schuster third, and Demet Barry in fourth. Now, let's go to our very happy winner here in Jackson. You have to just keep focused the whole time, and a 40K for us is a long time trial, and so it's a long time to stay mentally focused and keep yourself on that edge, you know, is pushing as hard as you can. So, you know, and a little lapse in your concentration can turn into, you know, losing time, and so you have to keep, it's a big focusing game. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. The Trustmark Tour Le Fleur isn't just a world-class bicycle race. It's also a terrific charity for a very special institution, the Blair E. Batson Hospital for Children at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Named for its pioneering pediatrician, this is the premier medical facility of its kind in the region and an invaluable lifeline. The day before the Trustmark Tour Le Fleur, Antonio Cruz and Julie Hansen of the Saturn team paid a visit to the hospital and made themselves some new friends. They helped to raise money for this pioneering hospital that has allowed many of its young patients to recover completely and lead long, healthy lives. Now the challenge is to find lasting and certain cures for many childhood diseases. In the meantime, the race will continue to raise money for the Blair E. Batson Hospital for Children. Over $130,000 already and still counting. And a very worthy cause indeed. And now to the men's race. And in the starting gate, Adam Spay out of Granite Bay, California. A very good pursuit rider who has recently been focusing on the individual time trial. And Spay is off, pedaling a little bit slowly, but interestingly, he's in a fixed gear today. As Scotty Weiss from Team Zaxby's follows Spay out of the starting gate. And Spay on the course turning an enormous gear. We'll see if it pays off for the 26-year-old rider. Here at the turnaround spot of the individual time trial course, and the racers really have to slow down here, John. It's also a difficult physical effort because there, you see, they have to accelerate back up to full speed, and that's a tough part of the effort. Monitoring the computers, they get a lot of information, Throughout the race, John Leeswin 
Team Shackley. Now John is a very interesting story. He was a very good professional in the early 90s, got off the bike for a few years and has come back in a real big way. Spay out on the course and John, this is really where he has to keep the focus going for almost a complete hour. Well under an hour, he hopes. The 25 mile time trial and with a one hour time used to be a winning time. Now they are doing 50 minutes, 51 minutes. And with that giant gear of his, he's hoping to go well under that one. And in the start, Jelly Belly must mean Eddie Gregus. And Eddie's certainly had some success the last few years. Won the 1996 uh, professional championship race as John Leeswin gets down into that aerodynamic tuck. Leeswin, an excellent all-around rider. Superb position on the bicycle. Surprising efforts out of a rider who everyone thought was finished, and he's come back to prove them all wrong. Leeswin with the triathlete bars, as they all are using them uh, nowadays. Eric Wolberg, Team Shackley, heading out. The Canadian uh, racing here in the U.S. Uh, championships. His time will not count, referring to Eric Wolberg. Riders like Eddie Gregus here, they are racing for the national championship. But because of the interesting nature of this event, certain non-American riders on the American teams are allowed to compete for their times. But Eddie Gregus and his teammate, Steve Haig. Now, this is a man we've talked about in the beginning of the program. Steve Haig, former Olympic champion, former Olympic trials winner, is a man who specializes in the powerful effort alone against the watch. Steve Haig, a 1984 Olympic champion in the pursuit event, and he has certainly had a career that spans all areas of bicycle racing. Absolutely has. Back to Eric Wolberg, first at the turnaround after 20 kilometers. Wolberg with a very special bicycle. Look how the back wheel is so tightly tucked in to the frame behind it. Now John, a quick question. If you're leading after 20 kilometers, how hard is it to be caught at that point? It depends on who's behind you. But in the case of Eric Waldberg, with the speed and power that he's got going, it looks to be difficult. There's John Leeswin, second after 20 kilometers. And look at the heat coming off the pavement here on the Natchez Trace Roadway. It's actually a national park. And tremendous heat and humidity here in Jackson, Mississippi, as Steve Haig, third after the 20 kilometer mark, 24 minutes, he has some time to make up. 22 seconds down on the leader. Hey, look at once again, as we saw with Karen Couric, look at the position, the perfect form of a world champion. Eddie Gregus. Eddie is one of my favorite riders on the entire racing circuit. He's a scrapper. He never says die. He can win a time trial, a criterium, a track race, and he's there completely, consistently, week in, week out. And John, you call him a scrapper. Looks like he got a little bit of a scrape there on his left arm, probably a fall from a training ride on the road. Navigators, that must be, and it is, Adam Spey, the man with the giant gear, second behind Eric Waldberg at the 20 kilometer turnaround point. He's got that gear going, but he is still the first American on the road behind this Canadian leading this championship. So it's Spey and Waldberg. Wolberg first after 20 kilometers, but Spey, the top American, will be back with the exciting finish of the Tour Le Four time trial in a moment. <laughs> 